last day's event. Last day event. I believe that many of you has this book or have read uh, the content of this book. But especially in the from chapter 20 and on, there are more than 20 pages describing the inheritance of the saints. And this is the subject I would like to share with you this morning. On one occasion, in round conference, the brethren said, Brother Dumitru, please prepare a study about eternity with Christ. And I, I was delighted with this thought to search about eternity with Christ, to live forever and ever in a place when there is no more sorrow, pain, separation, death, nothing. The inheritance of the saints is what we would like to consider. My beloved, this is what we are looking for. And we expect to inherit the promises of God, the promise that Jesus had given to his disciples. I go to a prepared place, but I will come back to take you with me. But how can we go to heaven? It's a good question that we will develop through the study. How can we have a passport to heaven? Usually we are uh, acquainted with a person who goes to another country. He has to have a passport and he has to have what? Visa. A visa and he has to qualify for it. But there's a thought here that I believe that will be of encouraging for us to consider a short thought from the inspired pen. Christ, only Christ in his righteousness will obtain for us a passport into heaven. What is the secret here to obtain the passport or the visa to heaven? Christ and his righteousness <coughs> will obtain for us a passport into heaven. So I believe that this is a precious thought. Not for us because we have merits, not because we have credits, not because we have uh, being favored uh, beside others or uh, over other people, but because Christ's grace and merits have been given to us, that we have accepted that by faith. It is a thought here in the book of um, Titus, chapter 3, verse 4, five and six and seven that says the following. We're going into the, with the line of thought that we have in the, in the introduction of our thought from the book of This Day with God. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior to our men appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now, verse 7 of the chapter 3 of the book of, of Titus continues saying, mm -hmm. that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Brethren, here is uh, the answer for our concerns and also for our desires. How can we be saved? Let us not think that what we do will give us credit or merits, but it is the righteousness of Christ, justified by his grace. Then we will be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And in chapter one of the same book, verse three, it says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, promise before the world began. Brethren, the, the promise of God is this. We must accept, we should accept it, believe it. This is what we, is the essence of all our Christian life, believing in the promises of God. And I know that for certainty that this will be fulfilled. I know not because I saw it, not because it was given me a document certified or I will say a, a ticket to go there, but I know the promises of God are this, that those that believe and accept Christ as his own Savior, personal Savior, 
and by faith grasp of his merits and credits of his perfect life on this earth, and through his grace overcome all what is necessary to overcome, will inherit eternal life. And when we talk about eternal life, we talk about eternity with Christ. What a thought, what a profound thought is this eternity with God. A child uh, one time uh, asked his father, we were in nature, and his father tell me what is eternity? I want to understand what it means, this word, eternity. And the father was concerned and looking around, what can we, I explain to my son what it means, eternity, what is the understanding of this word? And he saw a bird on a rock, and that bird was like uh, cleansing his beak, and he said, uh, Son, you see that bird? You see on the top of that huge rock? Well, eternity you will understand. When that rock disappeared by the, the, the bird continually trying to cleanse his beak, then you will know what is eternity. That is the end of it. But brethren, this is impossible, humanly speaking, for something to disappear like a rock, a huge rock, just for the sake of, a, for the reason of a bird just cleansing his beak. But one thing is true. The eternity means the life as the life of God. This is the mean. To have life measured with the life of God. This is eternity. The promises of God are so many in the scriptures. And I thought in one occasion, only the Apostle Paul describes something about eternity or the promises of God as ear have never heard, I had never seen, no, even the thought comes to mind of the thing God prepared for his people. But uh, there, were, uh, the old, uh, they, there is in the Old Testament a verse identical, very almost word by word, that describes the promises of God to the Apostle Paul. But let us go now to the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verse 4. Isaiah, <clears throat> chapter 64, Verse 4, for since the beginning of the world, many have not heard, not perceived by the ear, neither has the eye seen, O oh God, beside thee, what he had prepared for him that waited for him. We can see that the word of God is inspired. I see I live many, many, many years before the Apostle Paul. We'll say 600 years. I, I think I'm not wrong. 600 years before he wrote that, and Apostle Paul makes mention in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, 9, of those things that we have mentioned, things that never have been seen, heard, or thought about. Eternity with God, eternity with Christ. What a, what a thought. What a thought for us to meditate and pray about to understand, but we will never be able to come to the reality of what it means to live in a place where God will uh, give us all what uh, we desire and more beyond what we think about. In the book, uh, Bible Comment, page 1091, volume 6, it says, we are not now sufficiently advanced in the spiritual attainments to comprehend the mysteries of God. But when we shall compose the family of God of heaven, this mystery or mysteries will be unfolded before us. Brethren, do you want to know things that are mysterious? Men's curiosity many times. Want to know things that he never has seen? or want to develop this thinking. I want to know mysterious things, things that are not common. Brethren, these are the things that God is preparing for us. Mysterious things, but uh, we cannot understand now. One day, in the presence of God, when we will compose the family of heaven, the mysteries prepared for us will be unfolded. In reality, God never had the intention to separate men that he had created. He never had the intention to say to Adam and Eve, 
move away from this garden of Eden. You have no right, was not intention, but men fail. God wanted to have communion with men and women in a certain sense from the beginning, from, with, from Adam and Eve and on and on. An eternal communion and a method of related to develop or to unfold to men mysteries, things that one day we will study, one day we will enjoy to have. In the book Education, chapter, uh, the chapter about creation, page 25, Paragraph 4, we read the following. Adam and Eve had chosen the knowledge of evil. And if they were regained the position that they, they, they had lost, they must regain it under the unfavorable conditions they had brought upon themselves. No longer were they to dwell in Eden. For in its perfection, it could not teach them the lessons which it was now essential for them to learn. Although they pleaded with the Lord after they committed sin to stay in the garden, the Lord said, you cannot. You must go away. It is impossible for you to regain what you have lost here in this place. It was essential for them to go out. With sorrow, they departed. And he said, in unutterable sadness, they had bade farewell to their beautiful surroundings and went forth to dwell upon the earth where rested the curse of sin. And since that day on, how many children of God had cried for that uh, restoration of that heavenly home prepared for Adam and Eve in the beginning? And brethren, the unfavorable condition in which we ourselves are living, the things that we see are surrounding us in decay and in suffering, misery, make us to long for that city of God, make for long, longing us to that place that Jesus went to prepare. What do we see today? We see what is described in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 22. Romans chapter 8, verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain to, together until now. Creation is suffering, not only human beings are suffering, but creation is suffering. And note, the, note what it says, uh, consider what it says in the book Patriarchs and Prophet, page 59 and 60. So long as Adam remained loyal to heaven, all nature was in subjection to him. But when rebelled against the divine law, the inferior creatures were in rebellion against his will or his rule. Brethren, isn't that true? We see everything already is out of control. It's a rebellion they have not only on men, but also rebellion in nature. Everything is upside down. And nature doesn't obey anymore. There is a time when it's raining and there is a time when it's not raining. And rain when it is not necessary or too much in a place where it's not needed. And vice versa. We see everything is in a turmoil. Everything is in controversy one thing with the other. This is because Adam and Eve failed. Among the lower creatures, Adam has stood as a king. And so long as he remained loyal to God, all nature acknowledged his rule. But when he transgressed, this dominion was forfeited. The spirit of rebellion to which he himself had given entrance, extended throughout the animal creation, does not only the life of man, but the nature of the beast, the trees of the forest, the grass of the field, the very air he breathed, all told the sad lesson of the knowledge of evil. That was the experience of Adam. It is our also our experience, no doubt about. And this is the condition in which we live. And this should awaken another desire to say, come Lord Jesus, we wait for you. So we should not complain if circumstances in life places us in moments of I will not say despair in the fullness of this world, but in, a, in so deep concern, they say, what next? And then we pray, Lord, come, take us from this evil and sick world. 
let us continue more. The thought is this. That in reality, the, the Lord's uh, purpose when he created this earth was uh, interrupted. But God uh, never gave up the idea. The thought to redeem man, to bring him back again to his lost, his prim primitive or original condition. And then what provision have been made to restore man? The Apostle Paul described in the book of Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, the following. Let us read this verse, 4 and 5. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption, adoptions of sons. When the time came, 4,000 years after creation, after the fall of man, then Jesus came. According to the promise, he came to receive the adoption of men, you and me, to adopt again the lost family established in the beginning with Adam and Eve. And my beloved, the Lord came to this world. And we know he dressed himself in, a hu in human nature. And he walked with us and talked to, with us and also walked with men and he lived among men. And the description of the Bible in the four gospel is that Jesus was a divine, human divine. Not only that, that he went all the way to redeem us with a risk to lose his own life in order to pay the price for our transgressions. And he died on the cross of Calvary. And then to those that receive him and accept him by faith, the promise of eternal life is given. That is what we know is written in the book of uh, John. The Gospel of John, it says in the chapter 16, says the following words, words that are uh, very encouraging for us. Let us consider the book of John, and then let us go to the verse. Let's speak on, let me give the reference, chapter 17, verse 2 and 3. And as thou had given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou, thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. And what was the purpose of giving eternal life? Not only the thinking that to live forever, but to be together with Christ. The desire of Jesus is to participate of to enjoy the communion and fellowship with the human beings. And you know that Christ went to heaven with our human nature. He is God in uh, address, dress himself with the human nature in a perfect condition as a God. But he is our brother. He is not a stranger for us. He will never be a stranger. He will be one of us to eternity. It's what verse 24 of the same book says. Gospel of John chapter 17, chapter 17, verse 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Eternity with Christ. What a precious thought. And when we'll be with Jesus, what will be the condition of our life? <clears throat> we should think about this matter, about the future life. When somebody wants to go to a country, he go to the embassy and they say, please give me reference, all the beautiful places to visit. What is the description of the country? Its beauty, its conditional, etc., its condition, etc. And you know, and the person they want to visit a country, he reads and says, well, I think I will try to go there because uh, what has been described is so perfect. Let us now go, go to the Bible and describe, uh, the, the, find the description of the place we want to go that is in heaven and later to inhabit, this, inhabit again this earth, earth made new. Let us go now to... The book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 8 to 10. Romans, chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. 
But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we should be saved, saved by his life. This verse, brethren, uh, give us a precious thought. Reconciled. What is the meaning of this word reconciled? When there is a, a, a controversy, or difficulty between two persons. Somebody intervened to what, what to do with this. Remove all the obstacle and bring them together again and again they restore that communion, that fellowship, that joy being together. And we know in our life, we may, maybe we have gone through such an experience, reconciliation, or misunderstanding coming, how it's sore, how painful it is to know that there is now and not that uh, communion or friendship, especially in a, in a family affair between children or between husband and wife and vice versa. And when there is reconciliation, what a joy. Everything is left behind. Again, the, the smile and the, 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 the happiness continue being as usual. But in the thing is this interesting that in the purpose of God and not only to reconcile men with him, but to reconcile heaven. Heaven since the fall of man, since the fall of Satan and the fall of man, is in sadness because there is not perfect joy, knowing the misery that exists in this world because of transgression. But one day, heaven and earth will be reconciled, and peace and harmony will exist forever and ever. No more the devil to tempt, no more wickedness to exist, no more evil men in this world, but will exist just that perfect communion between created beings. Now, Jesus said to the disciples on one occasion, especially when he was uh, in the upper room that night, I must go. And where I go, you cannot come. You cannot go now. But was one disciple that was very concerned about what uh, Jesus said. I go, but you cannot come. Who was he? Remember? Peter. Peter then said this word. Let us go to the book of Gospel of John, chapter 4, 13. In verse 1, he, he tell us about the Passover, and he would have went in the upper room, and so forth. And then Peter asked the Lord, verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 36. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, with the ghost thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou cannot go, cannot follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterward. <coughs> Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. And then we know the dialogue existed between Jesus and Peter and the disciple. And finally, they say, Let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in me? In my father's house are many mansions. If this will not be so, I will not tell you this. But I tell you, I go to prepare a place, and I will come again, verse 3, and receive unto myself that where I am, there he may be also. And Jesus is coming again. Yes, my beloved, Jesus is returning. We can hear the sound of his coming as a way of saying. We can imagine Jesus returning with the millions and millions and millions of heavenly angels because the heaven will be empty. At Revelation chapter 18, verse 1, it says, there is a silence in heaven. Why? All the heavenly hosts come accompanying Jesus when he comes to this world to bring, to take his people home. And we know that the Bible said that they, they give us the uh, understanding that this almost half an hour silence referred the time of returning to to heaven of Jesus with his redeems. And then the redeemed will enter into the capital of the universe. And we know the name of that city is the New Jerusalem. What is the description of the New Jerusalem? 
Especially the book of Revelation tell us about the capital of the universe. And the interesting part of it, that this city one day will come to this earth after 1,000 years, will come to this earth and will be the capital of the whole universe established where? Where the old Jerusalem exists today. Exactly one day will be fulfilled what is written in the book of Zechariah chapter, Zechariah chapter 14. And it says the following in regard to the promise of Christ's return. We know when the disciples were there in the month of Olives and Jesus was to ascend to heaven, returning to his father's house in heaven. The two angels say, what are you, Lancy, what are you looking for? The same Jesus that came, he went to heaven, will come again. Fulfilling the promise of taking us to eternal home. Now in Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 4, it says about the return to Jesus after the thousand years, and what will happen? And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a great valley, a very great valley. What for? Preparing the place of the city of God. Revelation chapter 21, it tells us about this promise of this city to come to this earth after the thousand years of the redeems in heaven. And it says, verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, and I John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. And now chapter, verse 10. The last part. The holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Where? Exactly there. In the Mount of Olives. When he touched it with his feet, that place then will be removed. Everything will be put aside. And the old Jerusalem will be completely gone. And then the new Jerusalem will come to this earth. But somebody said, let me give me an idea what is a place of, to live. Especially, I delighted, and I think you delighted when you were young, to read more about the, the, the New Jerusalem, according to the description of the Bible. Especially if we continue reading the same chapter 21, uh, verse uh, 12. And had a great, a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. And then verse 13, uh, 14, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles for the Lamb. Verse 16. And the city lies four square, and the length is as, as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with, uh, with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of, uh, of it are equal. Verse 18. And the building of the wall of it was a, of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And then told us, tell us about the... Uh, Verse 19, the foundation of the world of all kind of precious stones. In 21, it says the 12 gates were 12 pearls, and so on and so on. Brethren, we had never dreamed to see something like that on this earth. Never. It, can, it is impossible. But this is the promise given by the Lord, and one day we will see fulfilled what is written in the book of Revelation. Now, some people may think, well, can, can we have a description of, uh, of the city itself? What is the size of the city? When in reality, the size of the city is such as a huge city in reality. The Bible tells us that, that in Revelation 21, 17, and he measured the wall thereof in 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. Well, let us see. The, the measurement of the wall is 144 cubits. And the commentary about this text, the author of this, it says, translated into feet using 18, 18 inches to the cubits, this will mean the walls are 216 feet in high. And the city lies four square, and the length is as large as the breadth and he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. 
The city is 12,000 furlongs in circumference. Using eight furlongs to the mile, this city will be 1,500 miles around, or 375 miles on each side. Imagine from here to the city of Washington, more or less, a little bit beyond, is one side of the city. What a city to be there. What an experience for the redeemed to be there in the city of God. What an experience will be yours and mine too, to be there. But we have to, not only to dream, realize that this by faith is a reality. Because promising the Lord promised eternal life, he will not lie for that. And where will he spend eternity? In the city of God. Part of the, the redeemed will be in the, dwelling in the, in the land, in the new created earth. As in Isaiah chapter 65, it tells us about the new heaven and the new earth created. It will be a real life. We will not be a spirit floating in the air as many people think these days. No, it will be a real life as it was originally intended when God created Adam and Eve. But not only that. What will be our time and occupation in the new earth? What we will be doing there throughout eternity? Some people will say, I will be tired doing nothing. Not in reality. We'll enjoy not only the creation of God. We'll enjoy the communion of the Father and the Son and the Holy Angels. We will be studying a school that will never graduate because the subjects are going on and on and on, and the things will be a delight for the saints. Here it says in this book, uh, My Life Today, page 100, 360, and on. The science of redemption is the science of all sciences. The science that is the study of the angels and of all the intelligences of the unfolding world. Uh, keep in mind this expression, unfolding words. The study will be their study and we will, there will be a science to continue study, but especially what science? The science of redemption. In essence, he says here, the attention of our Lord Jesus, our Savior, the science that entered into the purpose brooded, brooded uh, in the mind of the infinite, the science that will be the study of God's redeemed throughout the endless ages. This is the highest study in which it's possible for men to engage. As no other study can, it will quicken the mind and uplift the soul. You know what exactly a subject it will be? A really mysterious, if we wanted to know this mystery, here it says, continue the reading. In the same page. The subject of the theme of redemption. Uh, and it says more. The subject is inexhaustible. The study of the incarnation of Christ. See, his atoning sacrifice. A mediatorial work will employ the mind of the diligent student, student as long as time shall last. And look into heaven with its in a number of years, he will exclaim, great is the mystery of godliness. In eternity we shall learn that which help we receive the enlightenment that is was possible to them here we will have opened our understanding. The themes of redemption will employ the hearts and minds and talks of the redeemed through the eternal everlasting ages. The, they will understand the truth which Christ longed to open to his disciples, but which they did not have faith to grasp. My beloved, this is one of the things that we are occupying our time. Not only to have the communion with the Father and the Son, not only to live in a place to visit the capital city with uh, such a description that we had, something beyond our understanding, the beauty of that city that God had created and will be the, the dwelling place for the saints. Because from Sabbath to Sabbath, from one moon to another, from Sabbath to Sabbath, everyone will come and worship the Lord. He says in Isaiah chapter 66, they will travel it. From all the corner of the earth will go to the new Jerusalem, to that city that we have the description. And there they will have the communion with God and with the saints, but not only that, with the angel. And what a choir that will be singing there. Imagine the angels singing. And what about the 144,000 playing their instrument and the harps? What about they singing? A perfect and unison. Sometime I listen to a recording of the, one of the famous choir here, the 
um, Mormon choir. And it's a thousand voices. And I delight to, to hear that. And I say, what about 144,000 singing and more, the angels together with instruments beyond our imagination? So these will be the treasures that we will be, will be unfold to us in the new life the Lord are preparing for us when he will come. Brethren, now, what else we will do? And then I try to, to have an idea about the places where the Lord would like to, for us to visit. Revelation 14, 4, it says about a group of people that will have the privilege to go with, the, with Christ wherever he goes. It will be a special uh, group of people just going with the Lord. And you know what it says here? They will, it says at first, they will follow the Lamb with whithsoever he goes. These were redeemed from among men. And then what else? And it says here, being the first fruit unto God and to the Lamb. That's referring to the 144,000. Those that are living at this time, since 1844, until the end of time. Special group of people. There are many other redeems in this time, but special people that will have the seal of God. Identifying them as a redeemed from, a, from this world, through and through such an experience, they will be in the last days in the struggle between the, the beast and the um, false prophet, and also the condition existing in this world. But now, let us go to the idea of going to another places. And it says here, all the treasures of the universe will be open to the study of God's redeemed. Unfeathered by mortality, they wing their tireless flight to worlds afar. Worlds that thrill with sorrow at the spectacle of human war and ranks with sound of gladness at the, tiding, at the tiding of, tidings of a ransomed soul. Brethren, with an unutterable delight, the children of earth enter into the joy and wisdom of unfallen beings. They share, share the treasure of knowledge and understanding gained through ages and upon ages of contemplation of God's handiwork. With undimmed vision, they gaze upon the glory of creation. Suns and stars and systems, all in their appointed order, circling uh, the, the throne. And you know, this is based on the explanation of the book of Great Controversy from page 377 and on. Great Controversy, 377 and on. When I was here in Roanoke in the year of two, 2002, I came across an article in the newspaper, not only the Roanoke Time, but also an article on the US Today. May I share with you what it says here? Because when I was a child and I say, worlds, other worlds inhabited, could that be? But where in the Bible we find that the Lord created other worlds, many worlds, Jesus created. Do you remember the verse in the Bible? Hebrews chapter 12. If you go to the book of, uh, of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, just for the sake of... Uh, uh, bring into our memory what is written because it is like certifying what is been mentioned. Let us go to the chapter 1 of the book of Hebrews and read especially the verse 2. Has in these days spoken unto us by his Son, who had appointed heirs of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Probably until this article came up, Many people were skeptic of uh, worlds, uh, inhabited worlds. And then the UFO, they, they believe, oh, there are other people coming from the planet and trying to visit us. But see what it says here. Uh, the, the date of this article was uh, the, the day, uh, June 14, 202. And then you have some description of what they uh, discovered. A distant solar system that looks more similar to our own than any other had been discovered by American astronomers, raising the prospect that it could hold an Earth-like world that supports life. You know what else it says? European and U.S. astronomers Thursday announced the discovery of two solar systems 
exactly what it says here, suns and stars and, stars and systems. And they say two solar systems they discovered with planets in orbit similar to our own. And finally, they boosted the art, they harbor extraterrestrial life. In all, astronomers announced they have found 27 previous unknown planets, bringing the number of known planets orbiting near stars, nearby stars to more than 100. I imagine this is something, a description of what is given about the, 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 the universe. And this is something that we should not believe uh, uh, as a, a, a fantasy. Because in the Bible, we find the fact that there are other worlds inhabited. Worlds that are not with sinful beings, but uh, with uh, perfect saints, saints and uh, uh, beings that have never fallen. The discoveries underline the importance of a new instrument that uh, we are able to work in discovered planets. And it says here, in the year 2012, they will try to have a, such a big uh, telescope they can go deeper, deeper in the universe to find mysteries that one day the Lord will discover to us. Brethren, the time do not allow me to explain more about these things, but one thing I say, we have enough evidences through what men are writing, what men are discovering, that exists a world, many worlds different than ours, and one day this world will be restored. But who will be able to come into this star, into this place? Only those that will be prepared for that place. You and me have the chance to go to, the, to heaven and also to live in the new created earth and be forever and ever existing and visiting other planets and places that they have never been possible for men to go. Paul says, this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, let us press on. Forgetting now the past. Forgetting our experience of the past in our Christian life. But let us now from of now on determine to get ready, to be prepared for the imminent coming of our Lord Jesus. What we have to do today? We have to fulfill what the Lord Jesus said. Seek first the, reign, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. All the things in part that we have heard will be added to us. More and more things will be understanding and we will be ready to, to see. In my life today 369 says prepare for eternity with such a zeal as you have not yet manifested. Educate your mind to love the Bible, to love the prayer meeting, to love the hour of meditation, and above all, the hour when the soul communes with God. Become heavenly minded if you would unite with the heavenly choir in the mansions above. So may we open a new chapter in our life, recording the book that we have even in heaven. May the record of our life for an own be different. A record that we will not be ashamed. A record by which uh, the angel will delight. And one day the angels, our guardian angel may tell us the experience we went through for an own until the coming of our Lord. Maybe a positive experience. And then what is experience will be, especially to be with Jesus. Not only that, to be together. But then, I don't know, maybe you don't feel the joy I have in my heart. I'm very happy to be with you. I tell you honestly, I'm missing all of you. Such a fellowship for so many years. It is something that uh, we have there, but it's not like we, what we enjoy for so many years, 18 years here in Roanoke. But I believe that the Lord will give me that joy again over there. But uh, what it will be to be together in a place where there is no separation? I pray that you and me, I and you, will be there in the moment when the Lord will come. And we will say, here is our God we've been waiting for. And his glory and his hope we will rejoice.
May this be your experience and mine. May we en enter into the new uh, relationship with the Lord, by which, slowly, slowly, we are detached from this world and attached to the heavenly things. And may the Lord help us in His grace sustain us until the day of His coming, or until we, the, the day we will meet again. It's my Lord, it's my uh, prayer in asking this in, our, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, how good it is to know that you exist, that you love us so much, that you have given the best of heaven, that dear son Jesus, to come to this world and risk his own life in order to save us. And through his example of perfection, of his example of sacrifice, and also as well paying the, pray, the price of our redemption on the cross of Calvary, we praise thy name and thank thee from all our heart. And we ask, help us to believe in thy word. Increase our faith that we will never uh, be discouraged. In these days, the devil is trying to separate us from, from thee. And many temptations here and there comes along the way, and trials as well, that we are not only wondering why, but we are also concerned that we like to be strong and endure until the end. Help that this desire be more and more increasing in our lives. Increase our faith and to believe in the promise of the Lord, especially the promise of life eternal when he will come. Bless every one of us here, from the youngest to the oldest. May our faith, Lord, once more I ask, in increase our faith that we may believe and that we may be encouraged to hold on and prepare for the return of Jesus to be with him forever. Forgiving all our sins and our shortcomings and our past life, we ask this blessing not because we deserve, but because we love Jesus. In his name we ask. Amen. Amen. Amen.